It's October, and summer is in the rearview mirror. And right around the corner, basketball season. As an NBA draft analyst and scout, this is the calm before the storm. Sure, I'm watching a lot of film, gathering background info on prospects, setting my initial rankings, and organizing my travel and scouting schedule for the fall. So I have some stuff going on, but I'll admit, I'm antsy. I'm ready to hit the road, get back in the arena, and get back in my element. But before turning the page and getting into the 2025 NBA Draft, I want to take a moment to reflect on some of the most memorable scouting trips I've had in recent years. So in this episode, I'll share my experiences evaluating some of the most exciting prospects before they became NBA stars. And then we'll take a look at who's on deck. I'm Matt Babcock, and this is The Matt Babcock Show. Coming out of high school, Zion Williamson was already one of the top-rated players in the country. But when he arrived at Duke, he didn't just meet expectations. He created an absolute frenzy. SportsCenter was flooded with highlights of Zion's freakish athleticism from the start. And who could forget when he blew out his shoe? He was so powerful that even his shoes couldn't hold him. That incident caused a minor injury, and he missed a few games. One of Zion's first games back was against Duke's arch-rival, North Carolina at the ACC tournament in Charlotte, basically a home game for both teams. I was lucky enough to be there, sitting five rows up at center court, in an electric atmosphere. And Zion did not disappoint. He was like a wrecking ball out there, big, powerful, with defenders bouncing off him. His burst, power, and explosion were on full display, and of course, those video game-like dunks. Zion finished with 31 points, and Duke won by one. He was incredible that game, and throughout the entire tournament. Despite his dominance, some scouts still questioned, does his style fit the NBA, and can he stay healthy and lean enough for the long haul? Zion was the first pick in the 2019 NBA draft, but it's been a bit of a roller coaster since. He's missed a lot of games, including the entire 2021-2022 season with a foot injury, and his condition has been up and down. But when he's healthy, he's a force. Last season, he played 70 games and averaged nearly 23 points. I'm hopeful he can keep that trend going because Zion is a star when he's on the court. And looking back, he was one of the most exciting prospects I've ever evaluated. I had a great scouting trip when I visited Murray State in Murray, Kentucky. Murray is a small town, and the basketball program isn't exactly big. So this trip felt different from most right off the bat. When I arrived, I picked up my credentials and took my courtside seat. Always a plus because it makes evaluating players much easier. But that night, I could have set my notebook aside and grabbed some popcorn because the player I was there to see put on an absolute show. That night was my first time seeing Ja Morant. Truth be told, I was a bit slow to warm up to Ja that season. His path differed from most prospects. I didn't even know who he was before he arrived at Murray State. With most NBA prospects, I usually see them multiple times in high school before college. But with Ja, I had to catch up. Even though he was getting a lot of buzz, I was cautious. I didn't want to jump on the hype without a proper evaluation. I had him ranked pretty highly after watching film, but I needed to see him live before making any bold moves. When the game tipped off, Ja wasted no time making his presence felt. From the very start, he took control and never let up. By the end, it was clear. I had just watched a future star. In my sky report, I wrote, His handles are top-notch. He's quick, explosive, unstoppable off the bounce, and has elite court vision. He's a crafty finisher with both hands and very assertive and confident. Of course, there were still areas for improvement. I know that he was behind defensively in terms of fundamentals and effort. He lacked physical strength, was turnover prone, and needed to refine his outside shooting. But the talent was undeniable. The bottom line was clear. John Morant was the real deal, and that game confirmed it for me. Afterward, I moved him to number two on my big board, right behind Zion Williamson. Jaws had a few bumps in the road since then, but I'm hopeful he'll get back on track. And I really hope so, because Ja Morant is as talented as they come. During the 2019-2020 season, I had the chance to travel to Maui, Hawaii for the Maui Invitational. Now, I love Hawaii, but this wasn't a vacation. It was all business. I needed to see Anthony Edwards from Georgia, who was considered the front runner to become the number one pick. That first game, I was locked in on Edwards. And let me tell you, He was terrible. Bad shot selection. 
weak defense, poor body language. He was so bad that I seriously considered dropping him in my rankings, which would have ruffled some feathers. But I reminded myself, it's one game. Don't overreact. Then in the next game against Michigan State, it was more of the same. He was awful. But in the second half, something clicked. Edwards hit a couple of shots, made some plays, and suddenly he was on fire. By the end, he dropped 33 points in the second half alone. Harden like step backs, Kobe like fadeaways, LeBron like passes. Hands down, it was the best performance by a college player I'd ever seen. After that, I watched him a few more times in person. While his freshman season was up and down, and he was still immature as a player, that superstar talent we saw in Maui, yeah, that wasn't a fluke. Since then, he's addressed a lot of the early concerns. And now, Anthony Edwards has become a bona fide NBA superstar. A couple of years ago, I spent a few days in Las Vegas to watch Victor Wembayama and his team from France, the Metropolitans 92, face off against the G League Ignite. And seeing Wemby in person was like witnessing something out of this world. At 7'4", his size, skill, and coordination were unlike anything I'd ever seen. He handled the ball like a guard, knocked down fadeaway threes, blocked shots effortlessly, and threw down powerful dunks with incredible fluidity. What sets Wemby apart is his versatility. He can stretch the floor, protect the rim, and make plays that most players his size wouldn't even attempt. His ability to shoot from the perimeter, create his own shot, and dominate defensively gives him the potential to redefine what it means to be a big man in the NBA. Wemby is without a doubt the most unique player I've ever scouted. Watching him was like seeing an alien play basketball. It was surreal. And like everyone else, I'm eager to see how his career unfolds. But there's no doubt in my mind that he's just getting started. Wemby has the potential to be a true generational talent. I love what I do for many reasons, but one of the most exciting parts is watching elite talent before they become NBA stars. So as we head into the new season, I ask myself, who's the next breakout star? Is it Cooper Flagg from Duke? Ace Bailey or Dylan Harper from Rutgers? Baylor's VJ Edgecombe? Texas's Trey Johnson? Or how about one of the top international talents like Nolan Traor or Hugo Gonzalez? Well, to me, basketball season represents an opportunity for these prospects to turn their dreams into reality. And it's my job to determine who has what it takes. So join me on my scouting journey as I search for the next Zion Williamson, John Morant, Anthony Edwards, or Victor Wembayama. Subscribe to the show and visit BabcockHoops.com for NBA draft coverage and all things hoops. I'm Matt Babcock, and this is the Matt Babcock Show. Thanks for listening. 